Daniels. On my left is um, Vicki Danskin. On my right is Ellen Rocco and Dave Takamo. Our um, secretary is um, Rogan O'Donnell and momentarily Bren White, the village plan. Oh, there you are. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, Bren White is um, here and our she's our village planner. And Sally Rose is our village board liaison. Um, we have um, two items on the agenda tonight. Um, we have a public hearing for um, several um, applications in, uh, uh, I want to say Green Acres, so that's not right. <laughs> <laughs> it is Green Acres. It is Green Acres, okay. <laughs> what I was seeing, Eddie Arnold runs across the street. And um, then we also have um, the CBA 1408 for 3638 uh, Mainstream, which is proposing a change of use from a vacant barn to one bedroom apartment requesting an area variance. Um, but before we start, I just want to mention that I did attend the Ulster County um, Planning Board workshop. And the one thing that I walked away with that was a really interesting thought had to do with um, area variances, the amount of space that is left you know, between buildings. So when people want to get closer to the property line, and you'll appreciate this. A new concern is the sunshed now. Hmm. That if someone is getting too close to the property line, they may be having an economic impact on a neighboring building by cutting off their potential for placing solar panels, which I hadn't thought of, but I thought it was worth coming tonight. Okay. So um, without further ado, could I have a motion to open a public hearing for ZBA 1402, 1403, 1405, and 1406. I move. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, we uh, heard from the owners uh, at our last meeting. We would now like to open this to um, the residents to express their feelings about this. If you could please limit your comments to approximately three minutes so that we can give everybody equal time, we'd appreciate it. So would anyone like to address the board? Yes, could you state your name and um, where you live? My name's Ariel Curtin, Elizabeth Ariel Curtin. I live at Age One Prospect Street. And I'm actually a town resident on the other line of the Millbrook from this development. Okay. So the town bucks up against the village. The village is to the north of my property. And when the um, retention basin was put in, there, I felt that the, my leg was broken at the time, and when I got up from my broken leg, I found that they pulled those into the screen in numerous places, and I felt that uh, it was insufficient supervision of that process, and mostly because it was a nexus of the town and the village, it kind of slipped through. So um, I explained this, um, what's going on here, and it seems to make all kinds of sense. My only and I also want to thank the board for having notified me as a town resident rather than a village resident for uh, for this. But um, I just want to make sure that it's not going to be a precedent for um, other, um, you know, as, as it hinges on my property. I don't want this this lot to be disability for a 25 foot offset to be transferred to other projects in the area. I mean, if it's granted here, I just don't want it to be like a thin edge of a wedge kind of thing. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes. Uh, my name is Jacob Lawrence. I live at 22 Cooper Street, which is neighboring <coughs> within the development. Anthony built my house. Excuse me. Yeah. Uh, I'm very happy with my house. It's if you ever get a chance to come up through the neighborhood, it's a, it's a wonderful neighborhood. Um, there's a lot of good things going on in the neighborhood. Nice. Great people as well. You know, we've really appreciated what Dave Toter and, and Anthony have done. Um, in this case, I also really think that the variance makes a lot of sense. Uh, taking it away from the stream uh, is a very positive thing. You know, ecologically, just getting away from the stream as much as possible uh, makes a lot of sense. And so, so I support that idea. I actually live in one of the properties directly next to the lot number 31 here. Right. So yeah, lot 31. I live in. I live in oops. Would you like to move that yeah, up a little bit more? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I live in, I live in lot 22, and then these 
So I, that one was right next to me. I was actually concerned because obviously bringing it closer to the road also brings it closer to my house. Yes. And so as any you know, neighbor would be concerned, it's like, yeah, I like privacy a little bit. But then I, I actually emailed Anthony, and Anthony emailed me right, now, right away um, back and just asked me about my concerns. And I think he, you know, he really addressed most of my concerns. It's like I was very concerned at first because I hadn't seen the map, and then he actually sent me the maps so I could see how much closer it would bring it. And it's it is closer, no doubt about it. So you know, obviously, my preference would be for it to be further back. But I completely understood why he wanted to move it forward because um, it'd be actually very close to my other neighbor's house, David. And so um, I was really very pleased that he you know, communicated directly with me on that. And uh, I, for that reason, I really have no no objections to it. Well, thank you. Okay. Would anyone else like to address this issue? Okay. If no one else would like to speak to this issue, may I have a motion to close the public hearing, please? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. The motion is closed. Um, is there any discussion amongst the board members? As I recall, our previous meeting in this regard, we generally um, agreed with the reasons for the changes in regard to uh, the stream protection and also in regard to the fact that homes closer to the street are generally considered to be uh, a better design plan. Yeah. So in terms of some of the factors we consider, um, whether an undesirable cha change will be produced in the character of the neighborhood or a detriment to nearby properties, it seems that no, there's a positive to be gained by protecting the stream. And um, a neighbor just spoke to the fact that it's not going to have a negative impact. Um, whether the benefit can be sought by, sought can be achieved by some other method. and. The stream is the stream. We can't move it. Um, whether the requested area variance is substantial, um, and I think we were comfortable with the amount. Whether the proposed variance will have an adverse effect or impact on the physical or environmental conditions in the neighborhood. And again, quite the opposite, it will have a positive environmental impact by protecting the stream and whether the alleged difficulty was self-created. <laughs> and that's, you know, I mean, the property is what it is. So um, would anyone like to make a motion? So we'll Wait, you got to say a little bit more than that. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I move that we grant the variance. That we grant variances for ZBA um, 1402, ZBA 1403, ZBA 1405, and ZBA 1406. Is that your motion, Dave? Okay, may I have a second? A second. Thank you. All in favor? No. Uh, then the motion has passed. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the next item on the agenda is ZBA 1408. Um, could I have a motion to discuss ZBA 1408? Okay, and a second? Second. All in favor? All right. Any opposed? Okay, motion carries. Um, would the applicant like to come to the table? Is the applicant here tonight? Yes. <laughs> okay, so um, we have um, several letters here. Please have a seat. Um, so the building inspector has provided a letter of determination regarding this application, which reads. The property has 10,629 square feet of area. In order to have two businesses and three rentals, 
the minimum property size required is 20,000 square feet. You would need a 9,371 square foot variance. The existing garage with the proposed dwelling will need an eight foot rear setback variance. From the village planning director, um, we have the following memo. This application requests to allow the conversion of a vacant barn into a one bedroom apartment, which requires area variances for lot size and rear yard setbacks. The area variance for lot size is a substantial one, which is one of the criteria that New York State requires be considered by the ZDA. Village code requires 20,000 feet for this combination of uses, while this parcel has slightly more than half that size, 10,629 feet. The owner, the owner currently has two commercial businesses and two rental units on the property, which may impact the board's thoughts on any alleged hardship, another criterion required by New York State. The applicant has also not expressly proven in the application any of the other three criteria that the board is required to consider. As for the area variance for the rear yard setback, since the rear of this parcel is basically on South Chestnut Street and the barn already exists, I see no problem with granting that variance. But of course, if the ZBA is inclined to, then do, to deny the area variance for lot size, this additional variance would be rendered useless. It is also unclear, based on the current site plan, whether the parcel in question has adequate parking for the proposed additional residential use. The Village Planning Board attorney provided a memo regarding this application which reads, Xenon Pistiform has applied for a building permit to convert a garage to a one-family dwelling. He needs substantial lot size and rear yard area variances. The following is from last month's meeting memo. Neither the code nor state law provides a legal standard for the planning board review. This went to the planning board. In contrast, under New York State Village Law 7-712B, Paren 3, Paren B, the ZBA must explicitly consider five factors. One, whether an undesirable change will be produced in the character of the neighborhood or a detriment to nearby properties will be created by granting of the area variance. Two, whether the benefits sought by the applicant can be achieved by some other method feasible for the applicant to pursue other than an area variance. Whether the requested variance is substantial. Whether the proposed variance will have an adverse effect or impact on the physical or environmental conditions in the neighborhood or district and whether the alleged difficulty was self-created, which consideration shall be relevant to the decision of the Board of Appeals, but not necessarily preclude the granting of the area variance. Um, the role of the planning board in this context is not necessarily to duplicate the ZBA's task, nor is it to interpret any particular section of the code. It is rather to apply its broad understanding of planning principles and its understanding of the comprehensive plan and zoning law in determining whether this type of area variance is the type of area variance the village should be granting. I realize that this is a fine distinction, but there is no clearer guidance. The planning board should adopt a resolution by voice vote. The person who moves the recommendation should state the reason for the recommendation. Brogan can then transmit a copy of the minutes to the ZBA as the report. And we received mm -hmm. copies of the ZBA minutes, and I assume you have seen them, or the planning board minutes, and I assume you have seen them as well. Or you I attended. have not. Okay. No, we haven't. Oh. They're in your packet. They're in the packet. Um, yeah, I mean, if somebody wants to look at them, um, they are here. Um, so um, this is a motion from the planning board from the April 1st, 2014 meeting regarding these applications. Mr. Steffens moved to deny ZBA 1408, which is 
the number of your application, based on lot size and proximity to lot line. Ms. Harsho seconded. Four ayes, zero nays, one absent. Mr. Litton, motion carried. Um, do you have any comments regarding the application? Would you like to address any of what you have heard? Well, it's an existing building there. It's an eyesore. Mm -hmm. And we like to make it look good. Okay. So by making one bedroom apartment, we're only going to allow this person one parking space, whoever is going to be there. And it's quite well, about eight parking spaces there. We can give it one. Nothing is going to move either left or right or back and forth. That's how it's going to be. It's going to be living room, kitchen, any kitchen and bathroom downstairs, and the bedroom is going to be a loft upstairs. That's the main thing that we want to do. Which is what's, what's there now. Previously, a local artist occupied the space. And it was, there was a room with a room next to it, and then he had stairs where he stored his artwork. So there was a loft as well. Then he had electric. And so there's a, it's, the structure is existing. Um, I remember doing a parking analysis when we built the restaurant at 36 Main Street. Mm -hmm. Um, and when we did that, we had enough parking spaces for the restaurant and then some. Um, because previously we worked with the uh, building department and they gave us the maps and showed us where all the parking spaces were around our building as well as what's, what's in the lot behind the 3638 entrance. Have you, um, were you aware of the changes over the past, it's been I think two years? requirements for parking for residential? I have not. Question I have is, how are you going to build this into an apartment when I went down there and looked at it and I couldn't see evidence of even a foundation? And there's a foundation, but I have to, the better it comes up, it'd be stronger. Secure the foundation. Seems to me that uh, because it, you know, I could see where the, the, the studs were coming down and there was a plate, in some places the plate was rotted off. And quite frankly, I don't see how you're going to make that into a usable structure as it sits. It can, I think it can be done. It might be costly. It can be done. Yeah, maybe, well, if, maybe well, if you jack the whole building up. That's a general idea. Yeah. So it's just what for for us as the property owners. One, it's 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 an eyesore just when you drive by it, and and two, you know, for our taxes, you know, we have that building. We're, we're required to have insured. So for us, we we find that we should somehow use this structure in a positive way. I don't understand this. Maybe you could help me with this. This is the red bar. Right. Yeah, right. What is the starting line? This, this is the the lot that is over there. That's this is the prop. This is when you come in from South Chestnut. Yeah. So this is probably this the is the parking, parking area. area. Yeah. There's okay. Some parking on this side and as well on this side that touch the lawn and then there's that the lawn the here. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So this is all parking yeah. at this point. And mm -hmm. yeah. Did you go look at the thing? So this solid line just indicates that you own this whole thing. Yes. From here, this must be the street. Yeah. And this is the building. This is the um, patio area where the human is. And then this is if you just walk into Mr. Dolly's lot and around it. This is the whole parking area. Mm -hmm. So the stone line is parking and access. Access. And yeah. this is. So everything. It just doesn't seem to me that it's a problem, especially due to the placement of the building on the lot. Am I correct? It's the placement that is the problem. Well, it's also the total square footage. Yeah. Now, when I walked behind this building, because this is 36, 36 and 38. There was a sort of an area here in the back that was outside the back door that's sort of fenced in. How does that fit onto this diagram here? 
that's probably what's considered the shed area. Um, I think they just extended for the, the bar that's there. They made a, I guess, area where patio patrons can go out. So there's a patio that comes out here, kind of into the parking lot. Exactly where the shed is, where this shows us, we years ago there was a shed there. Okay, that is just replaced by a pencil. People so it. People it doesn't come out. I don't believe it comes out any further than where the shed is shown there. They go as well. That's what we're right here. Okay, so I'm not sure how that enters into the square footage because you're actually using that as an extension of the barn, aren't you? No. Yes. Well, there's a. There's just two fences. That's it. Is no roof. No have to probably, it would have to be measured. Mm -hmm. There's yeah. no roof or anything like that there. There are a lot of people when I walk by. Yeah, because they go there and smoke. The fence is there, so they're not an eyesore okay. <laughs> to the street. Yeah. Um, but I think it enters into the calculation of the parking. Okay. So you said it's the placement of the structure. If the placement, if it was moved over or? Well, I, I didn't understand that point. You are too close to the, to the, um... Property line? Property line, yeah. Yeah, how, how would you possibly do any construction on two and a half sides of it? You'd have to be on somebody else's property, which... We can't move it if we get, we get a permit. Can't bring it closer. What, the, the building? We can't move the barn if you, if you allow us. There's space, there's space to walk from the structure to Mr. Gottlieb's property line. There is a space to walk mm -hmm. around that. Yeah, but if you have and to- be, And on the other side, because there's, there was previously a Kinlan propane tank that was it's quite there. large that's still there, um, that separates the two. So it looks like it's butting up against the line, but there is a little bit of space. Yeah. Enough space, right. Not if you were going to do construction over there, you couldn't do you couldn't do a foundation without with the machine without being on somebody else's property. Yes, correct. So how many tenants? You know what side? How hmm. many tenants do you have right now? How many bedrooms are in the apartments up above? There's a two bedroom apartment over 36 and a two bedroom apartment over 38. And where's 38 here? Well, this is Next the square to building. It's right. just right. right. Just, so on just either side of each um, so there, are, there are two two-bedroom uh, apartments up there now. Right. Okay. And so this would be so it'd be a total of five bedrooms. But does that count? I mean, I'm actually looking for that way of five. They're separate apartments, so it would count as three apartments. Okay. So they would need to be. And you have parking already. For the apartments in this lot or this lot. So how many? Oh, lot. Okay. So how many um, parking spaces are allotted to the um, the two apartments? To be honest with you, most of our tenants they don't own vehicles. They have one but car. There is, you know, one, but the, most of them are students that walk to campus. But there are a lot of people. But. You know, we have to look at this. A lot of there's a well, we about 10 parking spaces about this. Yeah. Okay, and so how many are reserved for tenants? One for each apartment. One for each apartment. Okay. Let me understand this. If this garage were created a one bedroom apartment, could it be relocated to someplace on this lot? without being a problem. If yeah. the garage were relocated, you would lose parking. Yes. And there still is the issue of the square footage. Yes. Right. I mean, that is well, a substantial variance. You have well, we're looking for 9,371 square a, foot variance, and that's almost 50%. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's a lot. It's a big one. Hard to find a way around yeah. that, literally. <laughs> <laughs> literally. Very hard to find a way around that. But if this were moved elsewhere, these would this would become part So what is the required parking for the structure that's there with what's in it? Depends how many seats are in the it depends on the number of seats. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, we'd actually have to think of that. Yeah, yeah. You might want to read, rethink the whole thing and analyze it. Um, the things that we're supposed to be looking at, let me just read these out to you and let you assign to each one. Um, whether an undesirable change will be produced in the character of the neighborhood or a detriment to nearby properties. So you've obviously indicated that it would be an improvement to the neighborhood's visual to have a nicer um, apartment. How would it impact the neighbor? I don't think it would impact them at all. I mean, I think it would be a positive impact because there's a house next door. I don't know what it's used for right now, and they're just looking at this red yeah. structure that's just hanging out there. I'm sure they'd like to see something with nice windows and siding and something visually appealing. Yeah. Can the benefit that you are seeking be achieved by some other means other than an area variance? Yes. Yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, what, what are you what are you saying? The second criterion is whether the benefits sought by the applicant can be achieved by some method feasible for the applicant to pursue other than an area variance. So, for example, the variance to get too close to the property line, they could move the barn farther away from the property line. The overall square footage is a challenge. Well, you, not only do you have to move from from the uh, back line, you have to move from the side line too, so you're sticking it over here in the middle of the parking area somewhere. Right. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, or not. Um, is the requested area variance substantial? Yeah. And that's a problem, I think. Mm -hmm. um, will the proposed Variants have an adverse effect or impact on the physical or environmental conditions of the neighborhood. Well, density is an environmental issue. Is, is there already plumbing in this building? No. There's no plumbing. So there's electric, but no plumbing. So it would have to be hooked up to the village water Yes. And sewer system and sewer. Um, that would be a lot of digging in that area. Yeah, have you who had knows through whose property? Have you had conversations with Richard Tatley about doing this? No. How much parking is there for the restaurant, and where is the parking for the restaurant? I'm not sure. I mean, there's parking behind in the lot. It's, ten, in, it's parking space in the lot. In, in, in this there. gravel parking yeah. area. In here. Parking space. Unmarked. That's unmarked parking spaces. Parking space, it's and and how, how, many, how many How many cars? How, how, do, we, how do we deal they with that? They did renovations, so I'm not sure what their, what their seating capacity is. I know they've done renovations. I don't know if they've made less seating, more seating. Well, there's some formula for yeah. amount of yeah. cars per tables or seatings or something. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it is, but I know there is. The planning board would have dealt with that, mm. right? Yeah. Or well, would I would hope. It wasn't well, they did not, no, they did not mention that in we the did it originally. We, we, we originally mm -hmm. built the restaurant and did it originally <coughs> in 2006. So in other words, if you if you were to move this structure out so that there were no problems with side and rear variances, you're going to cut out a lot of parking. Okay. So but if an analysis was done that there was enough surrounding the building, then could that be done or not necessarily? No. Yeah. I mean, well, no. They can they can have they can include parking on the street, but they can't include parking in. But the bank owns there unless they have, I, I assume, unless they have uh, some kind of rental agreement for mm -hmm. parking or something like that. So I don't, you know, yeah. I, suppose, I suppose it could be. Originally in 2006, he gave us spots that where we had signs on his lot. Who, who he? Mr. Gottlieb on his property. Is Mr. Gottlieb the bank? No, he's no, no. Uh, Is that himself. next to the bank. But he's planning to build yeah. a building now. So mm -hmm. 
that would take that space away regardless. Because that agreement is long gone, so. Okay, so uh, I have, um, well, first of all, is it the case that you would actually use the existing barn or would you just demolish it and start from scratch? The idea is to try to save, salvage what's there um, to the best that we could. You mean if we were granted the variance or if we were, yeah. not, if we were not granted the variance? It doesn't matter. We might just, I mean, I don't, we'll probably get rid of it. It depends. But if we were granted, it would be to keep it the same size existing the way it is. That's our hopes. So do, have you consulted with an architect or, or an engineer about what it would take to either turn this into a habitable space or rebuild it? Yeah, we've talked about it. We've had conversations with a contractor. John Steinmeier is an uh, uh, extraction engineer in Kingston. I would think you'd have to have an architect or an engineer uh, assess the Well, we're going to need pretty elaborated drawings. Yeah, I mean, you know. And the other question I have is really, um, I'm, given that this is the downtown area in Barbara, I'm less concerned about density, and I am concerned about aesthetics. Um, so I guess one of the things that I can't picture and I'm wondering about is were you to start from scratch and were you to then reposition this building, would the number of parking spaces lost be a sufficient detriment not to I mean, if we deny the variance, what is yeah, then variance. the variance is denied. But I'm curious to know whether <clears throat> the parking space, I, I, guess, I guess there's a part of me, what I'm trying to say is that there's a part of me that says that I like the idea of something happening here other than this gravel Part of and I, but I don't know what other options there are that we could then consider that might be more um, beneficial to the community or to that location in downtown that we would be more comfortable considering those kinds of variances or whatever. But if we turn you it have down, to take the application right. as, as it is. is. Right. Yes. Right. You cannot sit here and speculate. No, I understand. I understand. I understand. So if we turn it down, then the owners have the opportunity to rethink the whole thing and then perhaps make a completely different application to the planning board. But if we turn it down based on the, the need for the area variance, are we cutting out the opportunity for them to come back with a different, once the area variance is denied, is that denied forever on the property? Or if they come back with a new different plan, one, then we could reconsider. Mm -hmm. And they could, we, they could rework the amount of space they're gonna take up as well. Mm -hmm. and further refine how the parking is affected or needs to be affected. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and if it wasn't, if it was a new construction, go to the planning board and they would have to re-evaluate the parking needs of the existing buildings and the current proposal and get that all put together. Do you have an opinion about any of this, Brent? Just what I already... Well, would it be better for them to withdraw the application, or would it be better for them if we denied it? Are there problems if we deny it? Yeah, I guess that is what I was That's what you just said, There right? aren't problems. So if, if they come back with a different plan, 
then it's a whole new application and it yeah. should be considered on its own merit. So you re review without prejudice. Right. Trying to. So based on Sally. the substantial nature of the Sally. of the uh, variance required, I would be willing to move to denial. I think it's 25 at this time. Do you, do you is there a second at this? We are set back in the slides. Dave, is there a second? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Do I know what it is? Um, yeah. Well, let me just add. Uh, Katie knows. The, the uh, rear setback is how many feet? No, not on this. What is the code in the village for rear setback? How many feet? Mark wrote it in his 15 feet. How much? 15? Um, wait, 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 wait. Let me actually tell you what it's. I didn't see it. Um, you will, the existing garage with the proposed, let me say it again. The existing garage with the proposed dwelling will need an eight foot rear setback variance. So whatever distance they have right now. And what about the side? It's, it's 10, 10 feet. Yeah, yeah. I think it's 10, so they're two 10 feet. feet on the lot right now. Okay, so in other words, there's two feet there that need eight feet variance. And what about the side variance? What's the side? That I mean, it's only not specified here. Is it 15? I'm not sure about that one. I think it's 15 feet. And that's what I think too. So that would move this out here. And we over here. All right, go ahead. I'll second it. Okay. Any discussion? So by by basing the, the denial on the area variance, that doesn't in any way affect a future application on this property should they decide to place one. As long as the new application is different than the existing application. Okay. Is there a requirement that there be a year between the denial of an application? Okay. Um, I just would like to say I am concerned about a variance that is almost 100%. Mm -hmm. That is a large variance. Mm -hmm. And I am uneasy going along with a variance that substantial. Ditto. Um, search, all right. Um, side, yard, setbacks. Um, so, is there any more discussion on this issue? Um, I have a, a point of information question. Yes. Who, who, own, who owns what actually is in this? Who owns this? James Bacon. Tri triangle. Yeah, triangle. Yeah, James Bacon. James Bacon. Owns it. And right now, um, Rock and Snow has sort of a, uh, annex. a you know, annex there. Right. But it could be it could be a personal home, and we have to. Think about not only right. what the village is right now, but what the village might be in 50 right. years. Because whatever you build there isn't a temporary thing. It it has impact, and as the village changes, um, okay. You said I'm sorry. You said rock and snow has what? It looks like an annex. And is that a pass through? No, no, it's just a separate building. It's a separate building. Yeah. Because they have a. Business downstairs. Side yards for one and two family are 20 feet setbacks. Um, in, wait, in that's the, not the art. Wait, that's the downtown. Downtown. No, no, no. Wait, hold on. I, okay, R3. Um, well, he can find that out. I mean, yeah, you know, you if, if, he wants to, if he wants to tear it down and move it over into the parking lot, if, if uh, you know, he wants to resubmit the variance, you know, I mean, it's. To me, it's the same thing. It's almost a 50 percent. Well, it would depend on how much. Wouldn't it also depend on how much parking? I mean, I know Still that the lot is just parents almost nine thousand. What was it? Nine thousand something. Yeah, they wanted um, the they require twenty thousand. Feet and they have ten thousand something. Right. Yeah, ten thousand. It's almost fifty. Ten thousand six hundred twenty-nine feet. So they need a variance of nine thousand three hundred and seventy-one square feet. Almost that is, double. Yeah, that's yeah. a substantial variance. 
So, any further discussion on the motion? If not, um, all in favor of the motion to deny? Aye. 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 All opposed? The motion passes. Okay. Okay, um, could I have a motion to adopt the April 8th, 2014 CBA minutes? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussions, any corrections to the minutes? Okay, if not, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, the motion carries. And could I have a motion to adjourn the meeting? So move. Do you have something you want to say? No. Um, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> oh, before we adjourn the motion, what's happened with the banners on Huguenot Street? Um, it's going to the historic commission, yeah. is it not? Yes. Oh, okay. They're gonna, it's going to be on the um, May 19, Monday, May 19 agenda, and then okay. the planning board will refer it on the 20th. Okay. It'll be on June. Now we can take a vote. Oh, she yeah. didn't expect to be on this. Yeah. Yeah. Especially with all the public hearings. Okay. Mm -hmm. She's going to do that tonight. She's going to add it to the agenda. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Good. So you're supposing you need resurfacing. I got to tell you this. No. Surgeon, no. I think he We don't have to do no. her. No, no, no. no, no, no. no, no. But it's there. Opening. So why? Huge cut. So, could I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Yes. Aye. 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 Aye.